Yeah, I mean the thing like I with my first short film, um, Broken, the one that I was I saw, uploaded those tutorials in two thousand five with. Yeah. That yeah. that short got around a lot because there wasn't anything like that. There was I was a, a mini DV short with like a hundred visual effect shots in it. It was yeah, a sci-fi. Yeah, that's like crazy unique. It's yeah, it was and yeah, it was really unique and it looked like film and it was like you know film. You know, if you look at it now, be like, yeah, dude, it looks twenty four p. But back then, people were like, holy crap, what did you do? It was right, very right. moody and it was like shot in a great location. And I got around town and I started getting calls from producers, agents, managers. I even had like some Oscar winning producers contact me. I was 20, I don't know, 24, 25, bro. 27, bro. something like that. I, so, oh man, that is too young for me to have that. I'm so happy it didn't happen that young. No, I would be pissing myself. Well, this is what happened. So I would go into these meetings and they're like, this is great. And they're like, do you have a script version of the short? And I'm like, we're working on it. Mistake number one. Do you have anything else? Yeah. I have ideas. Mistake number two. And by the time yeah. that the heat, you know, like I was pitching to studios. I was doing stuff, but I didn't have anything ready because no one had ever told me to do what you're doing or what I've done yeah. since is to have other projects prepared, other pitches prepared. And by the time I got around with the script, um, it was obviously like a $125 million um, extravaganza. Um, <laughs> right. And... Uh, you know, I, all the people that were interested in me, I was like yesterday's news. And I was just like, no, that, yeah. the, 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 the spotlight is on you for a minute. And you've got to strike when that minute's ready and have yep. a lot of stuff ready to rock and roll. If you're if you're trying to play the, the studio game, you know, yeah. uh, which is, you know, depending on the size of the work you want to do and the projects you want to do, unless you're independently wealthy or can raise that kind of funding yourself you're going to have to work within the studio system. I opted yeah. out. My, my first two features were I opted out of the studio. I'm like, fuck that, screw it. I'm just going to do it myself. Um, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm just going to do it real low budge and I'm just going to do my own stuff. Um, and that's fine. But again, like I always say, Kevin Faye, if you're listening, I'll take the meeting. Uh, you just let me, I'm, you, I'm, 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 I'm here. <laughs> I'm down to talk, Kevin. Anytime I got some ideas for the next Avengers. But... Uh, <laughs> But I was, it was funny. I was in, I was in an agent's office and this really was kind of jarring to me. I had another short film uh, I did like five years later that got a lot of attention as well. Um, and I got to do the tour, the water bottle tour again. I was already here in LA at that yeah. time. Yeah. And I did the water bottle tour around town and I walked into an agent's room and they were like, hey, we really love your short, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, listen, I want you to watch a couple of shorts that we have. I want to see what you think of it. And they had these other shorts. And this is like 2000, I must say 2011. So we're still early on. There's, you know, the, the YouTube thing had not really like, you know, people weren't yeah. watching shorts yet like that at a high level like they are now. Um, it wasn't as, as, as it was today. So I was watching DVDs of shorts. And some of these shorts were from directors from overseas and people had never heard of. And they were amazing. Like, like insane, like product, Zack Schneider production quality, David Fincher production quality on short stuff. And I'm like, why haven't I heard about this? Why haven't I seen this? And yeah. and he and he's like, this is the other projects we're looking at. These are the other directors, but they, you know, we're working on developing other stuff with them. And at that moment, I real. And by the way, most of those guys, I think almost every single one of those shorts, they never they never materialized. They th those projects never went anywhere because I remember the names. I wrote down the guy's name. I'm like, I want to see if this guy goes anywhere. Um, and a lot of them didn't go anywhere. They might have gone into commercials or music videos or something else, but they didn't get to make their features in the studio system. And that was the moment I realized, like, oh, talent doesn't mean everything. Talent is great and skill is great, but it's also with yeah. timing. It's about timing. I mean, if you sh if El Mariachi or Clerks showed up today, we would have never heard of who Robert Rodriguez or Kevin Smith is. Period. And they've said it themselves. Yep. Like, they, it just wouldn't have made it because that was that moment of time for that that kind of product. You know, yeah. I think I think like a young Robert Rodriguez today would have done what you guys were doing, doing like these really awesome you know, visual effects laid in short films and putting them up on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but what he was able to do in 91, you know, it was a different time. So it's about timing yeah. as well. And it's weird. And that's the thing. You've, you've kind of got to be ready at all times like you're training constantly for you're training constantly for the apollo fight you're uh, you're always yeah. you're you can't be like hanging out you know eating bonbons you know 
because one day Apollo is going to call you. Hey, do you want a shot at the title? And yeah. and and you've got to be constantly in shape, constantly ready for when that opportunity comes. And that could take 10 years. Yeah. That, and, that, and, and it's it's kind of like <clears throat> you have to have heat and you can try to create heat for yourself. And and that heat dwindles out very quickly. And then you got to wait till heat has been created. But it's the lottery. You're just playing the lottery over and over and over again. You can't. I mean, there, there's very few things you can do to like this is going to create heat for me. It's like you just try over and over. And some of the stuff that <clears throat> I did, I did a short film called Sentinel right before Ballistic. And it actually got me um, contacted by several producers. And I never would have guessed this in a million years. It was this short little piece that I just did for fun and kind of just to try uh, something where it was just a visual effects and one guy. I didn't even write a script. I made it all up as I went. We had a crew of like six people in the middle of nowhere and it cost me sandwiches, you know? And that got me more attention than the $30,000 short film I did with a 30 person crew and all, and these actors that I flew in and all this stuff. That got me zero attention. Nobody contacted me after that one. And, and similar to you, like, I had the, the, uh, a similar, not, I didn't really do the water bottle, water. <clears throat> But uh, after proximity, I was contacted by some managers, uh, some agents and two different producers and all of them asked me the same thing. And I had the same answer as you. As, uh, no. Well, what's the feature <laughs> version of this? Oh, I didn't even think about. Oh, wait. A feature version of this? That would be cool, wouldn't it? You know, I wasn't even ready for that. Like, you should, you should write that. You should, we'll, yeah, like you're telling them, you yeah, should write that. I'll, I'll direct it. Good. You, you should. Why don't you yeah, develop and call good. me when it's ready? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and then it's like, well, what else are you working on? And uh, well, it was this? I was working on this. I got a PA gig. I got a PA yeah, gig next exactly. week. So That's all of work. all of that just evaporated because it just tells them like, oh, this person's not even kind of ready. Anyway, moving on, we'll see what they come up with down the line. Um, <clears throat> so that taught me a lot. And then talking to you know, friends and whatnot, you know, them telling me those things. Then after that, it was like everything I did, I tried to make sure there was something that I could talk about. Uh, after that, and it's just like after that, it's just constantly trying to make a little bit of heat for yourself, like. Ballistic got some heat, which got me some stuff going. And then that heat dwindled. But then doing the short film, There Comes a Knocking, actually brought that heat back up. That was like the main reason for making it because, yeah, we had the script. But if we also have the short, that puts some heat because it's something actionable. It's something right now that they can look at that, you know, thankfully, Ballistic created enough heat to have the managers that would then allow this to get passed around because without Ballistic, that doesn't happen. And then, you know, There Comes a Knocking shows what it's getting. But even what's funny is like everything is going to lead to something. If you let it, like I did a short film called ghost house back in, <clears throat> I think it was 2016. So mm -hmm. I did a short film called ghost house in 2016. It was just for fun. It was basically like a, a punchline of a short film, like horror movies in real life. Like your house is haunted. No one's staying there. You're burning that thing to the ground. Like that's the short film in, in, in a nutshell. And <clears throat> uh, a friend of mine saw it and he passed it to a friend of his who was uh, an assistant at three arts at the time. I don't believe he was a manager yet. And, and he was like, Oh, this is cool. I'd, I'd love to chat with him. So we just talked just, Hey, who are you? I'm me, you know, and this is what we do. Oh, that's cool. All right, man. Well, it's great to meet you. And that was it from 2016 to the end of 2018 when ballistic hit. And then all of a sudden there's all these different producers. There was like five producers at the same time, all saying they wanted to develop a feature with me. And I'm like, how does this, how do you navigate this? And so <clears throat> I asked a director friend of mine, he's like, dude, you need a manager now. And I'm like, great. So how do I do that? <laughs> you know? And then I had remembered, Oh, this guy at three arts, we really hit it off. Maybe he has. And I, so I emailed and I'm like, man, we, I, I don't want to take any of your time, but I'd love to just pick your brain. Here's what's going on. And I'm not sure what to do next not knowing that he's now a manager at three arts. And then he's like, Hey, can we jump on a call? And then we jump on the call and he really responded to the short. And, uh, and that's how I got my manager, uh, you know, and now him and, uh, Luke Maxwell and uh, Will Robotham are at three arts are now helping me navigate all this stuff, but it's because of a relationship that just to, Hey man, what's up in 2016 for a short that nobody cared about, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it's like, it's all those little things, like you said, always being ready for whatever it is. And like all these little ingredients eventually amount to hopefully that final baked delicious cake, you know, the one that they've been telling us about since we started this damn, this yeah, damn journey, the cake, damn it. 